Hello and welcome to the short introduction to OpenFOAM, which is an open source CFD software. OpenFOAM stands for Open Source Field Operation and Manipulation. Although we will be using OpenFOAM to solve CFD problems, the software can solve any set of field equations. It can be velocity, temperature, magnetic field, electric field, and so on. OpenFOAM uses a numerical discretization known as the finite volume method. We don't need to know the details of this method, but it's good to know that we will come across several variables in OpenFOAM with a prefix FV, which stands for finite volume. Being open source, a large number of researchers and students have contributed to the development of the solver, examples, and tutorials. It is becoming increasingly popular now to use them in teaching and research. The main drawback of OpenFOAM is that the learning curve is a little steep. There are no friendly graphic user interface seen in other commercial software. It gives a feeling like you are doing hardcore programming on a terminal based application. If you are familiar with Linux programming, you will not find OpenFOAM daunting. Otherwise, it can be. However, it is as powerful as any other commercial CFD software. OpenFOAM was originally developed by CFD Direct. These are some important and useful resources to pick up OpenFOAM. The first place to start is the CFD Direct's tutorials. IIT Bombay's Spoken Tutorial is also a helpful place to start learning visual step-by-step -step instructions. Apart from that, there are also several solved textbook problems in the FOSSE website. In this tutorial, we will learn about the broad philosophy and methodology of using OpenFOAM. In the hands-on tutorial, we will solve a simple conduction problem. As mentioned before, OpenFOAM uses a text file based input. It follows a directory and files based structure. Each of the problem we solve has its own directory or folder. The problem is called a case. The case directory contains all the input needed to solve the problem. It also stores the final solution obtained. This is an example of the case directory for the first problem usually everyone solves in CFD. It is the lid driven cavity flow. This is also the first tutorial problem available in the OpenFOAM website. In this case, the name of the directory is cavity which is the name of the case as well. The words in blue are directory names and those in black are file names. So we have three subdirectories under cavity, zero, constant and system. These three directories are essential for all open form cases. Parameters related to the physics of the problem are stored in the constant directory. It could be the geometry, thermodynamic and transport properties and the mesh. Then you have subdirectories named by these numbers. Here we have zero. These directories denote time instances. In these time instances, the field variables are stored in separate files. 
in this case we have just two field variables pressure denoted by p and velocity denoted by capital u the time instant 0 also represents the initial condition at time t equal to 0 the files p and u also specify the boundary conditions of the problem then comes the computational parameters computational parameters are those that are required to obtain a numerical solution to the problem these parameters do not affect the physics of the problem that is to say they do not appear in the model equations instead they appear when the model equations are discretized in a domain there are also several other parameters that specify what kind of solver needs to be used what is the tol tolerance that is acceptable and so on the file fv schemes describes the finite volume methods of discretizing various differential operators we have various types of differential operators in cft equations the time derivative gradient of a scalar divergence of a vector laplacian etc each of them can be discretized in many ways all these are described in the fv schemes file similarly the file fv solution contains parameters for solving a set of nonlinear algebraic equations to summarize the constant folder contains all physical parameters and the system folder contains all computational parameters now let us see how the files are written as mentioned earlier the input files for open form are in plain text format the syntax is similar to c language that is each statement ends with a semicolon all the parameters are represented in what is known as a dictionary object a dictionary object contains a key and a value pair the key is a string word and the value can be a scalar or a multidimensional array in this example the word type is the key and the value assigned to it is the variable called fixed value which is a scalar in the second line the word value is the key which is assigned to a vector of three components scalars are written in plain text right next to its key for vectors or arrays the list of values is written within round brackets here 100 represents the x y and z coordinates of a vector complex objects are represented by dictionaries a collection of key value pairs can be grouped together in between curly brackets and the collection can be given a name in this example the type and value parameters are clubbed together inside the dictionary called as moving wall dictionary objects can be nested as well here we have a dictionary object inside another dictionary object called boundary field finally we have the square bracket notation that is used to specify the dimensions of a variable open uses the standard seven common dimensions mass length time temperature mole current and luminal intensity in SI system, they have units as kg, meter, second, kelvin, mole, ampere, 
and candela. For example, the kinematic viscosity nu has a units of meter square per second in SI. Its dimensions and value are specified inside square brackets. This zero is for mass, two is for length and minus 1 for time, which is nothing but meter square per second. This is followed by the value which is 0 0.01 here. Now let us look at the broad steps to set up a case and solve a problem in open form. These are from the first tutorials on the OpenFoam website. These are also the steps to solve any new problem using OpenFoam. Beginners in OpenFoam problems do not start from scratch by creating directories and files. Instead, we use existing templates and modify the parameters. The best place to start OpenFoam is to look at the tutorials folder. It contains cases covering various physics and boundary conditions. First, we identify and copy the closest physics example, then modify it for our geometry. For simple cases, this can be done by hand. We will see an example in the tutorial session. After modifying the geometry, we need to visualize it to ensure that it is as per our design. This is done using a companion software called as Paraview. We will have a separate session on introduction to Paraview following this lecture. In this example here, we have modified the slab to suit our dimensions. We can display the axis to check for the size. Then we can create a mesh within its domain. This is done by defining blocks and the type of grid we want in these blocks. For simple geometries, we can use OpenFoam's built-in meshing application known as Block Mesh. After completing the mesh, we should view the geometry again now with the mesh. In the simple slab case, the mesh looks like this. After confirming the mesh, we have to set the physical constants such as viscosity and thermal conductivity. Then we specify the initial and boundary conditions. Finally, we specify the computational parameters. These are parameters related to time control, discretization scheme, solver method, tolerance, and when to write the solution to the disk, etc. The solver is then executed. It could take a while depending on the number of mesh cells we have chosen. For small problems such as this, it can be run on a normal laptop in a few seconds. For large complex geometries, we need a parallel computer. Even then, it could take a day or so to get the final solution. An important aspect of CFD is to view the results using different visualization methods. For scalar quantities, such as the pressure, we plot two-dimensional contour plots like this. This helps us to quickly identify regions of high and low pressure. For vector quantities such as the velocity, we can plot arrow maps such as this. Here, the direction of the vector denotes the direction of local velocity and the color denotes its magnitude. A good practice in CFT methodology is to get at least the simple case working from end to end. Like in this case, we have got a simple geometry with minimal mesh cells and we plotted the pressure and velocity contour. 
we can call this a minimally viable solution. Even if the solution does not seem correct, it is okay. But we have set up a workflow from start to end. This is important for OpenFoam because of a text based file input. Like any other programming, OpenFoam code can also contain syntax er errors and bugs. Getting something to work is an important milestone in CFT. After this, we can refine the mesh, change the solver parameters, optimize the time, and so on. We will now provide a background to the first tutorial problem of OpenFoam. This is called the lid driven cavity flow. This is a canonical test problem for all CFT, and so it is for OpenFoam. It is used as a benchmark for incompressible flow solvers. If you write your own discretization scheme and your own solver, other CFT experts will expect you to show that you are getting the correct results for the lid driven cavity problem. What is the lid driven cavity? We have a liquid filled in this rectangular cavity with walls on three sides. The front and the back wall are free surfaces. This means that we have a long rectangular channel going through the screen. On the top of the cavity, we have a lid that is moving at a constant velocity. The motion of the lid sets up a flow of liquid in the cavity. Since the front and back walls are free surfaces, the flow is essentially two dimensional. Since the motion of the lid drives the flow, the flow is called by the name lid driven cavity flow. If you are unable to reproduce the standard results of this flow, it means that the computational parameters you have chosen are incorrect. Why study this problem? One, because it is a simple geometry. The flow is two dimensional. In this problem, the only dynamical parameter that is of consequence is the Reynolds number. By altering the Reynolds number, we can get simple linear solutions at low RE to highly nonlinear solutions at very high RE. Technically, we cannot get turbulence since that would need a 3D flow. However, at high RE, the flow patterns we get are quite rich. We see here three patterns at different RE. What we have to note here is the vortex patterns. How many numbers of vortices are there? Where are each of them centered? What is the shape of the vortex? We may have expected that we will see circular vortices for moderate RE. But even at RE equal to 100, we see that the main vortex is not at the center of the cavity. It is also not circular. Small vortices are seen here and they are called as corner vortices. This is also called as a secondary vortex. Because it is the primary vortex that drives the flow inside the secondary vortex. As we increase the Reynolds number, the corner vortices increase in size. At R equal to 10,000, we can see a tertiary vortex in this corner. When we set up your open foam problem, our goal must be to reproduce the shape and the location of these vortices. This will give us some confidence in going ahead with unexplored problems. Here are a set of exercises from OpenFoam tutorial set. Visit the CFT Direct site 
under this URL for user guide. If you are a beginner, simply follow the instructions given in section 2.1. This will introduce you to the entire gamut of CFD steps including meshing, refining mesh, paraview visualization and plotting. If you can do this, you will be able to extend this knowledge for other problems in analyzing for example temperature and concentration profiles. If you are expecting to take a real world problem, then you must do a few steps further. You can learn to plot streamlines and compare with results from literature for different RE as shown in an earlier slide. You can also learn to use multi-block mesh that is different regions having different grid sizes. There is a spoken tutorial for this which you will find helpful. For advanced users who are likely to use CFT on a long term, it is important to know about the meaning of various computational parameters. What optimum set of parameters will give us accurate results in the shortest time? What solvers and what are the various options for the discretization? To summarize, we learnt about the case directory and file structure in open form. We had an overview of the specification file syntax and the key steps in setting up a problem in open form and obtaining the solution. Please carry out the first tutorial problem from the CFD Direct user guide. This will help in carrying out complex problems. Finally, I would like to leave you with this information about FOSSE CFD case study project. As part of IIT Bombay's FOSSE project, we encourage users, mainly students and teachers of CFD, to contribute more tutorial problems in the repository. You can take a look at this website for several problems submitted by others. You can pick up your own problem and provide a tutorial case which can be used by others for their teaching and research. Thank you.